That is one big pile of shit. All right, so welcome back, everybody. Today, we're actually going to continue the lovely, lovely trend here of doing some nice, awful build guides for you <laughs> and actually taking a look at something that you've all actually kind of commented on, and that is about sideways builds here. Now, if you didn't know what sideways builds are, essentially, instead of having the builds be in the traditional frontwards, backwards orientation, like a build such as this here, where you have the movement parts out on the side, we're actually taking a look at these movement parts here where it's actually built more with an emphasis on side-to-side -side orientation here, so that instead of your movement parts being on the side, they're actually now frontwards and backwards on your vehicle, which can have a couple of interesting advantages, build options, and it's a whole different arena to build in entirely. So let's quickly dive into it. So sideways builds can actually be done on a variety of chassis parts here that have actually expanded in recent months with the addition of the Omni and Big Ram and other movement parts. So they actually can be achieved on things, like I said, the Omni here. They can be achieved on, as shown here, with the ML200s or with the big ramps. And the big ramps also have a very similar movement speed and on something like the Hover here. They also can be achieved to a lesser extent on things like the meat grinders here, because meat grinders technically do have sideways orientation builds. However, due to the innate properties and characteristics of meat grinders, they're a bit more challenging to actually achieve just because of their intrinsic properties that make them way less agile and combat friendly. So I would generally advise using uh, sideways meat grinder builds and for the majority of instances you're not really going to encounter them because they're just so clunky. So don't really worry about it, it's technically possible but we're not going to be focusing on them. However that still leaves us a bunch of parts that we can actually mess around with here today and they all have very interesting build properties here. And there's a couple of tips and tricks that you should do when you're making your sideways build here that you can then optimize it even just a smidgen further. So first things first, let's get a basic car here to work with and then I'll kind of show you some basic tricks. All right, so we have a very basic build here that I just want to quickly showcase how to actually attach your movement parts to the cabin here. Because there's a lot of people who like to kind of reduce the amount of frames you need to actually utilize here to maybe not necessarily the best of uh, effects. So one thing to consider when you're actually putting out your legs and boot parts and attaching it to the cabin, you want to at least have it so that each movement part can at least be attached twice or can at least be attached independently from all the other legs here. Because one thing that people like to do here is that they want to attach multiple legs or multiple parts only to a single part here. So for example, I could swap out all of these for a single one of these four by eight frames. Now the reason why that's a bad idea is because if one of these frames gets rammed or they get shot off by a straight cannon shot, well congratulations, your car just disintegrates. And one example of a build that does this may not necessarily be the best of ideas is a build like this where two of the hovers here are actually attached to a single 2x4 frame here, which is not really ideal. One straight cannon shot here and congratulations, your hover is completely crippled on one side here. Now you can mitigate that by always being in the correct orientation and being aware of your surroundings here, but what's always better than actually being hyper aware is also having redundancies built into your vehicle as well. So having each one of these hovers be attached to a separate individual frame here would actually minimize the chance of you actually becoming crippled because of a straight cannon shot here. And that's what you generally want to do with a sideways build here. Alright, so I've attached some basic armor to this car here, just to give you kind of a basic idea of how you actually want to armor your car here. Now, as you can see here, I've actually added on quite a bit more frames here. We got a nice little 1x8 frame, 2x6 frame, and 1x6 frame, and we kind of did this on the opposite side too. And the reason why here where they're actually using a bunch of other frames here that are completely disconnected from the other parts here that I attach our leg is that we don't necessarily want any of the kinetic energy or damage from these frames to actually leach into your structural parts here because as you said here since each leg is independently attached to its own single frame here they may not necessarily have the absolute highest of hp here so by actually extending out the coverage for the frames here you actually kind of shield it from bullet fire from cannon fire and just from fire in general so that these frames themselves actually last way way longer here not to mention too that frames themselves are very very durable parts and kind of act like those buggy floors or buggy cabin parts here that actually have bullet pass through here, except these also contain that with contact resistance here. So as used for structural enhancement, 
for body armor here, they're actually really, really solid too. The downside about them is that they don't actually add any HP to your overall cabin build, or to your overall cabin, so that's one downside about using them. However, because they're still very structurally sound, they still add to your overall durability in the sense that it increases the chance that, you know, crucial parts will not fall off and that you'll remain combat effective for longer here too. Now another interesting thing here that you can do with your frames here, or with particular sideways builds here like these ML200s, since these ML200s here have absolutely fabulous ground clearance here, you can actually utilize other movement parts here as armor in itself here. So for an example here, we actually have our armor track here extended out with a bunch of frames here, and now it actually extends out in front of our car. And the reason why this is important is because any builds that are actually firing up or at level with you will actually shoot or have to shoot through this armor track first before they can actually start making their way into the more internals of your build here. And by utilizing something like an armor track here, you can see that it has phenomenal durability at 1300 points with an incredible amount of resistances, 25% bullet resistance, 25% uh, explosion resistance, 50% contact resistant, and 25% fire resistant here. The only thing it's not innately resistant to is energy damage here. But either way, it still has an insane amount of durability here to actually withstand an incredible amount of punishment. And if you're ever brawling with someone and they're in front of you, well congratulations here, you now have just an obscene amount of damage here that you can actually work with here, an obscene amount of damage resistance to work with here. Now the thing is too, how do you deal with skirt armor here? Because skirt armor is not going to quite be the same here. In general, you want to have a skirt of armor around your car that generally extends, you know, one or two blocks out from any sort of major component, maybe if longer. Not to mention that it should also have redundant connection parts here so that stray bullets don't strip off your armor lickety split here. And in one case here, I have some skirt armor here. Of course, it's not comprehensive. I'm not going to build head to toe the absolute perfect build here within an hour. <laughs> it would take me a very long time to make a very well optimized build here. But I just kind of want to show you some basic general principles here that you then can extrapolate out to a wider build here. And as you can see here, we do have some buggy parts here that are, you don't have to have the absolute most upfront and highest durability parts here to utilize to actually connect your skirt armor here. Because you have to remember, skirt armor here is not meant for it to actually be armored plating, but more or less a catch-all shield for things like cannon shots, explosion shots, and stuff like that that can actually wreak havoc on your build, and then you have more high durability and meaty stuff on the inside of your car, actually protecting your critical components here. But like I said, with skirt armor here, you have it lightly attached to your car. You tend to have redundancy here just in case there's any sort of sideways skirting here. And by doing that, you actually protect a nice portion of your car here, because say someone actually shoots a cannon shot over here, bloop, hits that thing, that thing falls off again, they have to fire again, bloop, may hit that, or may hit something further internal. So actually having these extra redundancy and skirt armor in there will enhance your vehicle's survivability greatly, especially if you're utilizing something like a hover, an omni bot, or an omni wheel, or anything like that that may not necessarily have the absolute highest durability that an ML200 have. You can actually get away with a little bit less skirt armor on an ML200 built because, like I said, ML200 is just a beefcake. But if you're floating around on a build something like this, then having more and more skirt armor here is going to be absolutely crucial here. And in fact, on a build like this, you can actually see they do have skirt armor here up front here, except it's very, very minimal here. It's meant to just be a very light catch here so you can reduce your power score as much as humanly possible here with no skirt armor on the side here, hopefully by trying to keep yourself as forward as possible to block as many of the shots as humanly possible. But you can see there, it actually took quite a few shots of this Corvo here to actually strip off quite a few of that armor parts here. So it's actually really great here at actually keeping the durability of this car pretty nicely maintained. Now also don't be afraid here to, to actually utilize hardware, and other components to actually be your armor as well. So for example, a build like this, you actually could throw out your engine like so, keep it out up front and prominent, because the thing is is that not necessarily with a lot of sideways builds will really you need the engine, nor is an engine a like critical component of your car's function. 
So you can actually utilize it as a little bit of space armor in itself here, especially if you're dealing with very structurally weak parts like those of the hover variety, because those hover parts only have a very slim amount of durability, such as this one, which only has 165, and this one only has 200 here. So you're not dealing with very high durability parts here. So if you kind of extend that by putting out other modules up front to actually block it, then congratulations, you actually sit there and make your overall build slightly more durable. However, you can also use your under part here to actually house a decent amount of hardware components too that may not necessarily want to be out front and utilized as armor. So for an example here, if I wanted to actually hide some ammo packs here, you can actually still do it pretty dang well here underneath your car here, and you can actually stack these multiple times if you want to actually get a decent chunk of parts here and hidden and out of sight here. Because with skirt armor, your legs, armor tracks in the way, these things will likely not be popped unless you get rammed here, which you can also minimize with a couple of other strategies and just general awareness too of the battlefield. So you can still utilize the underside of your car here, and if you better place the frames better than what I've done here, then you can actually start slapping on things like Maxwell's or other sort of components here, and you'd still have a lot of clearance here to actually work with and actually keep those parts working just fine here. Now what I've showcased so far was the ML200, and those have a very particular building section for them due to their exceptionally high clearance, and the fact they can also be interchanged with big ramps themselves, and how you can actually utilize things like hardened tracks, armor tracks, and whatnot to actually utilize as armor. That's pretty unique to the ML200s themselves. Now what about other movement parts like the Omni Wheels, other hovers? What are the considerations for them? Well, in general, you still want to actually do something similar to them. You want to have your own unique parts for them. Like for example, here you want to have a single frame going to a single wheel here, just so that you have at least a little bit of leeway here. If one part gets shot off, you still have a connection for the other parts here that doesn't cascade into a multiple part failure here. And as you can see here too, they also have the other wheel here attached all the way at the far end here. And this is actually a particular concern with very low riding builds here that necessarily don't have the length or girth as the ML200 legs. Because the thing is, if you build your sideways build super far out here to accommodate more spatial armor, or in the case of this build here, to accommodate the space of two tsunamis, is that you'll actually have to put a wheel very, very far out there with a lot, a lot of frames here to actually get the proper leverage to prevent this front side here from dragging on the ground. And by actually putting a movement part all the way out here, the front end of your car here is not actually grinding too much against the floor here to the point where it's actually reducing your speed, actually hitching with the floor and other things like that. So it actually still allows you for great and optimal movement here. One other thing to consider here too is that with the Omni here, we don't necessarily have the absolute highest of clearance here that you would have with an ML200 or a hover here. So you actually have to make the underside here a bit more smooth. You can't extend anything below the actual depth of the wheels. Congratulations. Any bump that you hit will immediately stop you in your tracks here. So when it comes to an Omni build here, you actually want to make sure that the underside of your car here is pretty nicely smooth here and allows for great traction and movement of your Omni. If you're finding that any particular part is actually digging in and hitching into the ground here, try orienting it instead of like in the lengthwise fashion like this, just flopping it onto its side here and that there will actually enhance the smoothness and uh, riding experience. And again, with an Omni wheel built like this too, make sure that you have a variety of space parts here. In this case, this person is using a little bit of frames here, a lot of buggy parts here, and they're kind of extending it out here with double touching points here with this buggy trunk and the right sewed here. And on the back side, they have a little bit of extra armor here with the gun mounts and then a little bit of bumpers here to for melee people, as well as, of course, is just having that extra length there in case you get shot by a cannon or anything like that. So having extra nice spatial parts here keeps the interior of a build working longer and you'll live longer too. Now, finally, hovers. These are the challenging things to actually work with here because they have a very particular quirk with them, and that is they are absolute glass cannons here and that they will absolutely get destroyed if you are not being careful with them in the absolute slightest here. So for example here, we have this 
lovely lovely hover build here and they're kind of doing a little bit of a sin here by having two of the hovers here be attached to one frame at a time here as we've already discussed that is a big no-no straight cannon shot comes in straight bullet shot comes in there you lose two of your hovers here and your vehicle becomes way 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 harder to control now theoretically you can control and still maneuver your vehicle with only two hovers however with only two hovers here you're not going to get proper you know, lining up your, your cannon shots here, because imagine this vehicle, but now it's completely on its side and dragging on the ground, it's going to be a bit more difficult to here to actually shoot your cannons, if the game even allows you, because if you actually shoot too close, the game won't actually let you shoot at all. So that's a big sin here. However, they also have tried to minimize that with some buggy floors here, and actually adding on some canvas roofs here, to kind of act as space armor here. Because the thing is with the hovers is that they don't necessarily also have the highest of tonnage here and only roughly around a thousand here. So if you actually wanted to haul a decent chunk of armor here, you actually would have to have a very large cabin and you wouldn't necessarily have the most acceleration or the highest of speeds here. So that actually wouldn't be necessarily the best of ideals because one of the main benefits of the hover over say the Omni and the ML200 is they're absolutely fabulous dexterity, the ability to quickly turn, and the fact that they completely hover over the ground here and can float above people, so it actually makes them much, much, much more agile for a lot of stuff like that too. Another interesting thing quirk with hovers here, as you can see here, we have an actual park here on the ground that seems to be dragging on the ground here if you actually look at it, but as you can see here, the hover itself actually pops up immediately so it actually is not really a ground clearance issue to begin with. But there's also a quirk too where if you're dealing with exceptionally heavy hovers or exceptionally heavy flying builds is that they tend to actually drag on the ground and they may dip substantially every time you come across a little elevation change ramp or anything like that. So one way they can actually minimize that is by putting parts like that that are very, very, very close to the ground there so whenever you come across an incline, a slope, a dip in the ground here, it actually hits the ground here and actually prevents your car from rocking back and forth as much. So actually minimizing or reducing the clearance you have here actually reduces the time that you seesaw back and forth here. Because if you didn't have that there here and you say we're actually rocking back and forth left and right here, well what happens is, is that it takes time for your car to actually level back out here Instead, it's actually quicker just to slam into the earth, and then congratulations, your car just rebounds a little bit, and then you're ready to fire again without having to do all of that C rocking forth motion. Now, of course, that can slow you down and make your build a little bit less uh, able to dodge and be a dexteritous, but at the same time, it's also a very minimal trade-off here. Being able to quickly fire off and deal with inclines here is way better and then the occasionally getting hitched into the ground here, which still really isn't that big of an issue for hovers. A majority of the time, you're not going to find yourself getting absolutely clobbered in the field by mountains or hills or anything like that. Another interesting quirk you might see with hovers is that due to their incredibly low HP, you actually may find hovers may have their cabins all the way in front of their car instead of having it all the way in the back where it's protected. And the main reason why they're actually doing this is because, one, the cabins themselves can have an exceptionally high amount of durability here. So for an example, a car like this, the cabin here has 720 durability here. Frames themselves have way lower durability here at roughly around 21, and the hovers, as already stated, only have a maximum of roughly around 200 durability here. So if you can actually make the cabin itself take more of the damage before your hover goes down, then congratulations, your hover lasts longer, and you're actually much more combat effective here. Because the thing is, there's no point in having a build that's still alive with a lot of cabin HP if it can't really move or aim effectively. So actually keeping your hovers intact is a higher priority than keeping your cabin intact per se. Because the thing is, is that what actually allows you to be combat effective more longer is actually just being able to move and properly fight than actually being alive per se. Now the downside about actually putting the cabin up front is that because it's all the way up front here, you can't put hovers behind and in front of the cabin here. So you can't have durability or parts up here and behind here. You can only have, say, parts extending backwards this way here. So if you actually get shot or you get rammed up front, 
we actually may run into a linchpin situation here in which your frame will fall through and then congratulations, your car just kind of falls apart like spaghetti there, which may not necessarily be ideal. You've seen plenty of builds where they get shot by a cannon, get rammed by one melee build, and the thing just falls apart here. You can minimize that by again, adding in more frame parts here, attaching it twice to the cab or even three times through the center here to try to get as much durability as humanly possible. But if you're trying to go for an ultra slim build, that may not necessarily be possible. So if that's the case, then you want to utilize a higher quality frame here, or a heavier frame here with higher durability. So when that happens, it's not going to happen nearly as often. You can also try to minimize that by extending out bumpers and other sort of parts here that have the innate contact resistance and explosion resistance and high durability so that that way you can actually preserve the integrity of those frames for much longer and again utilizing things like these uh, skirt arm here with redundant attachment points here. But I think other than that, that's going to be the main tips and tricks here to actually get started with making sideways builds here. Now, of course, it's not going to be a complete comprehensive list here. If I had access to all the armor parts and all the movement parts here, I actually would go ahead and try to like build out a seven hour video here, actually showcasing all the various techniques that you can potentially do here. But those are just going to be broadly the very few things that you're actually going to be doing with your build here. So main things again, having redundant frames or extra frames for each movement part here to secure its integrity here. Having skirt armor here is going to be absolutely key as well. Make sure to rebind your keys here as seen with the forwards, backwards, left, right, and strafing mechanism so they can actually properly move here. As well as also just making sure that when you're actually considering the clearance of your movement part, like the Omni, the ML, or the hovers, to actually uh, use the underside of it or make it smooth on the underside of the case of the Omnis or include the nice little bump rails for the hovers there to actually minimize back and forth rocking here to actually go ahead and get back on the shooting. But I think other than that, that should be everything. So if you guys have any more tips, questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them down below. I may do a follow-up to this or I may expand upon it even further. Who the Jolly Pumpkin knows here? But I think beyond that, I want to thank you all for joining this evening. You've had fun. Following our platform is your favorite. Feel free to join this channel as a member. It's only cost $1. And I think other than that, guys, we'll call it good here. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.